Yeah, today we're going to take a little tour of my old stomping ground and um, more in particular it was in it was right in the central basically of um, the gangland wars Melbourne underbelly series so between January of 1998 and August 2010 it's a span of 12 years and seven months um, there was a bit of a a gangland war going on between that, that period and um, 38 people or so got killed and a lot of them was um, retribution for another one but it was mainly um, to take control of the drug empire <coughs> they used to call Melbourne the amphetamines capital of Australia there was that much coming out of it I grew up with one bloke who um, he's still alive actually he's in jail Tony Mockbell um, he didn't live too far from here yeah, he's the only one that didn't didn't really get killed out of the main main figures. Yeah, so we're going to go around for a little bit of a tour, and um, I'm just going to take you to a couple that happened very close to my place, um, within about a five k radius, I would say. We'll probably start off with Lewis Moran's brother. He got shot just sitting outside of a cafe in um, Ascot Vale, Union Road there. I'll put that clip up now as we go past. Oh, and it was over here somewhere, one of these. Or one of these. Like one of these, see how the people are sitting out the front there? Now we'll head on to um, a prick relation of his. I suppose you could call him. Jason Moran. He got shot at the basically the back of the Cross Keys Hotel, it's the Cross Keys Reserve. Um, he was at a football game with his kids, and him and his bodyguard Mario Bavaro, not Mario, I'll put his name up. They both got gunned down by a masked man who ran away over the creek. I might even put some little maps up for you. Where we're heading is in here, because this is where the action happened. Oh wow, well, there's a big facility there now. It was all open previously. Um, there was a little over there where the gates are, if you can see them, or the fence line is. There was a little um, facility for changing clothes and whatever else. But this is the back of the Cross Keys Hotel. Murder would have happened in between here. I'll have a look at that driveway. I'm not sure that wouldn't have been there because it's only been put up and the end over here. And if you can just see at the back there, I think we can actually go out here. Let's go out there. Oh, yep, here we can. Let's get out of here. Eh? These little kids were playing soccer or something over here. And there it is over here. came running from across the bridge and ran back across that bridge so the getaway car was parked on the other side of the Mary Creek yep. you can see Christmas lights maybe but yeah he ran up we'll get Chuck a Yui come back from here so this one here that's across keys was actually double murder and the killer came from there and we returned that way um, as I said, there was a building, would have been over there somewhere, near where the light stand is or whatever. That wasn't there, it was an all open field. And he, he just came and went without nothing. I think he used a shoddy, so there was two killings, yeah. Jason Moran and um, Pat Barbera. Barbero, Pat Barbero, that's the one. We'll go back in there, that way. And Pat Barbero. Um, so that actually took two away. That was a double murder. All right, now we'll head off towards my place, eh? Um, so from Mooney Ponds, we move into Queen Street, Coburg and Nick Radev. Uh, 
and Bulgarian immigrant as a little boy had all sorts of convictions against his name growing up from guns, drugs to racketeering, um, standover, um, uh, armed hold-ups, uh, um, yeah, armed robberies and all that. Yeah, he was quite the character. Um, he lived a life, oh, not a hair out of place, wearing Versace suits. Um, when he got gunned down, he had a $20,000 watch on him. When he was buried, he was buried in a gold casket. Yeah, so... These boys, yeah, they say that they break when they get caught. Go for legal aid, yeah. Anyway. And this is where Nick Radev got done in Queen Street. Just here at the laneway. Now this all used to be different just here. There was a bus stop many years ago. But it was just around this area here that he got done. Actually I might go for a piss. Um, so maybe I'll remember in comments that he got done in the laneway here, but I don't think he would take that risk to... I don't think he was that type of person. That's where we came from. I stopped here for a piss break. Let's go through to, through to here. This is my street where I lived. Ah, look at all the trees, how much they've grown. Wow. Flip on the high beam. Reno's parents' place is gone. Fuck. Number 80. Which are Reno's building, man? I might come through. One of my best mates growing up. Lived there. The Hewitts. And this is my old primary school. St. Fidelis. So this is coming into my little part of Coburg. Yes, I remember these houses. Lee House House, that's a beautiful house, that one. Beautiful. Ah, they've got a lot of trees in this, around this area, so that's my next door neighbour's house. This one here was my house growing up. There's John's. That one there with, where you can see the light on. And they put a little glass panel in there, it's still a lounge room by the looks of it. There was my room behind the tree there, my parents' room. That was my room just there, as if you can see a little light on. Yep. Geez, it's ugly now. It really is. Oh, they've made a mess of it. it. Used to be so fucking nice, and the old man kept it, yep, making the smack, if that's a, a word or a saying. <laughs> um, only about a kilometre away. Um, which is what 0.6 of a mile for you, anyone else? It um, Tony Mockbell lived, and as I said, he's the only one that survived. They ended up um, catching him over in Greece. So they were trying to get him on some pissy charges, but he was going to do I don't know three years maybe, I think. And um, then well, they had him on those charges, and he was he was out on bail going to court. He was just about to get sentenced. Um, he realised that he was going to do a lot more time. I think there was more charges coming up against him. So, um, well, good on you. Yeah, he bought a little boat. Not so little, but he got to Greece. Hit away in it and stayed over there. I think for two and a half years he was on the run for. He's more known now as, you know, they call him Fat Tony. So a lot of people called him that while he had his empire going. Uh, but just, yeah, the wig. That's how people remember him these days. <laughs> yeah. They, when they took the photo, they didn't... I don't know how he, if that was the wig, but I doubt it very much. But they just, yeah, have a look for yourselves. <laughs> yeah, so he won't be out there, oh, fuck, till 2031, I think.
Yeah, so that's my little story about a bloke I grew up with. We knew each other from the area. But um, if I go through Sydney Road, I'll put it in here and I'll show you a lot of the buildings that, he, that I know that he owned. His first real big acquisition in Brunswick was this place just here with the red flashing light. Welcome to Brunswick Market. It was this here. He owned the whole property. Up until here. We'll go around the back. And here's the back of the Brunswick Market here. car spots and mainly just for rubbish out here it was storage little cool rooms here up on tall roof oh, let's go up there oh hello Last in my little round up, round up, but definitely not the last one to be killed, was Lewis Moran. He got done in the Brunswick pub. It's where he used to frequent to have a drink. Lots of people warned him, you got a hit on you mate. You know, don't be frequenting your locals, but him just being him, pig headed. Um, yeah. He went there that night and he got shot in the, in the front of the venue on the right hand side of the main door There used to be a pool table just near there um, Trying to escape So, let's roll the last clip Thanks for joining guys, I appreciate it Hope you have a good one See you. I don't know if you can see a couple of uh, past the town hall here and a bit further on there's some blue neon lights going down the building on the right hand side Yeah just coming up, it's got the yellow triangle just coming up over here you know, The room on the right just where the fellas are sitting is where he copped it So this is another look at the Brunswick Club It's just a drinking complete pool there now. That's the entrance. But if you see where those um, sticks are, or that, what do they call it? Like a bar sort of thing with the sticks going up. That's an outdoor area now. That's where the pool area was. So it was basically in that little square, and there was only one door to come out, which is to come out here. So the gunman had all the exits covered.